Father, we want to lift your name on high, this great day that you have created and given it unto us. As we start this service, King of Glory, may your Holy Spirit come, guide, and direct us as we start. We want to commit our lives into your able hearts, King of Glory, that you may be with us from now on. For we pray this, believing and trusting in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our call to worship is John 11, 25, and 26. Jesus said to her, I am resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Now, praise and worship. Call praise and worship. 
Yes, welcome you in this service, those who are at home. Welcome to this Resurrection Sunday service. Are you delighted that the King of Kings has risen? Are you delighted for the King of Kings? Why don't you celebrate the King of Kings who has risen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are singing Msalabani Pamuokozi Hapo Niliomba Upozi. Amen. Hallelujah, piga makofi kwa Yesu. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sangwe na
yetu yote ukalipa hilo deni la dhambi tunakuabudu bwana and pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are before you this morning with us living in our heart, O oh God, worshipping you and honoring you, our Father and our Redeemer for this day that you have given unto us, O oh God. We want to worship your name. We want to, uh, to testify that there is no other God but you, my Father and my Redeemer. Receive all the honor, receive all the glory, receive all the exaltation this morning, King in heaven. We thank you, my Father and my Redeemer, because you are righteous, my God. We thank you, my Father, because you care for us, my Lord. We thank you because you love us this morning. 
And this is why my Father and my Redeemer we lift your name this morning and we testify that God, there is no other God like my Father. This morning, dear Lord, as we celebrate this resurrection Sunday, God, we want to accept that, Father, we are sinners before thee, my Father. Our Lord, when you look at us from heaven, we are filled with my Redeemer, Father. And this morning, King in glory, we want to repent of our sins, O God. How we pray, my Father, that you may search our spirit this day, my Father, that you may forgive us our trespasses, my Father, the sins of omission and sins of commission, my Father. We want to repent this morning, our Father and our Redeemer. Dear Lord, we thank you because, my God, you have been crucified, and today you have risen, my Father, my God, so that, my Father, our sins are forgiven this day. And so this day, my Father, we pray for your forgiveness of our sins, Lord. We want to repent the sins of our nation, King Ngore. We repent the sins of all Kenyans, our Father, wherever they are, my Father. And this morning, Lord, we pray that you may search each one of us, O God, that, my Father, you may forgive us, O God. We thank you because any time we call unto you, my Father, you listen to us and you forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us this day, dear Lord, even as we bring our petitions unto you, my God. We thank you for the many things that you have done for us this day. Thank you, my Father, for the gift of life, O God. Thank you, my Father, for the gift of each other, my Father. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of uh, our country, Kenya, my Father, and my Redeemer. Thank you because of the gift of families, my Redeemer, Father. We thank you, my God, because you have been gracious to us, my Father. We thank you for this day that you have given us, even as families, my Father, even as we lift these families before you, God. Praying, my Lord and my Father, that you may bless each family that is represented here, my God, and even for those that are watching us online, my God, we pray for these families in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father and my God, we thank you for them. Fathers in those families, Lord, my God, you are the one who positioned them there, and you made them the head of the families, oh God. And this day, my Father, we pray for wisdom upon our fathers in the name of Jesus. We remember the mothers this morning, King in glory, and we pray, my Father, that you may give them wisdom, my Lord. Even as they do the work that you have entrusted on them as mothers, King in heaven, we commit each one of them unto thee, O Lord. We want to remember even our children before you, O God. We thank you for each one of them, even those that are big, those that have families, King in heaven. We commit each one of them unto thee, God, and we pray, my Father, that you may continue to bless them, my Father. We thank you for those that are sitting for their KCSC at this time, thanking you for the past week, O oh God, and even for the remaining uh, days of this examination, that my Father, you be found of them, Lord, remember them, give them good health, my Father, and even give them good memory, my Father. We thank you for the whole team that is manning this examination, starting with the officers in the Ministry of Education, the TSC, my Father, the security personnel, my Father, and all the teachers that are involved, either in supervision, in federation, and even the center managers, oh God. My God and my Father, we commit the whole team before thee, and we pray for a smooth examination period, oh Father. Lord, we thank you because, my Father, you are the healer of all ailments, Lord. And this morning, God, even as we thank you for the good health that you have given us, O oh Lord, we remember there are many that are sick in hospitals and others at home, my Father. Some of them, we know them by name, others we don't know them by name, O oh God. But one thing that we know is, that, Lord, you know each one of them and you care for them, my Father. Your word reminds us that, Lord, you have got good plans for each one of us, O oh my Lord. And so, God, we pray that you may send your word to those people that are aiding God. Look at those that are crying unto you this Sunday, my Father. Look at them, my Father, and remember them this morning. We lift each one of them unto thee, my God. Father, we thank you for those that are mourning their loved ones, oh, my Father. My God, you are the Prince of Peace, oh, my God. And so this morning, we pray for those families that are mourning, oh, God, that you may give them the peace that surpasses human understanding, King in glory. Encourage them at this moment when their spirits are very low, my God. Come through for them and provide even for the resources that are needed, oh, God. We thank you because, my Father, you are able to do this. And you know, my God, we are going to live to this souls that are pain in, oh God. Thank you for our country, Kenya, my God. My Lord, we thank you for the leadership of this nation, oh God. We lift the president and the deputy president and all those that are in leadership of this nation before thee. We know this is a difficult time that they are ruling, oh God. A time when God 
Any small decision that they make, my father matters a lot, king in heaven. We ask for you wisdom, my father. Remember the president as he stands to make statement, oh God, how we pray that your wisdom may fill him, my father and my redeemer. Lord, we are still struggling with COVID-19, oh Lord. My father and my God, one thing that we know, our father, is that our solution is in your hands, king in glory. And so, my Lord, we are looking up to you, my father. You are the Alpha and Omega, oh God. And we are trusting upon you, my Father, that, Lord, you come through for us, even as a nation, King in glory. My Lord and my Father, at COVID-19, we do not bother us anymore, God. Look at the nations, even in the world, my Father. The way COVID-19 has affected so many nations, oh God. Many, many deaths, our Redeemer Father. Lord, we cry unto you this morning, King in heaven. And we pray, my Father, if it presents you this morning, the Lord, you hear our cry, oh God. My Father, we are looking unto you, Lord, because you know you are the healer of all ailments, my Father. Your word says that, Lord, you heal all our diseases, Lord. COVID-19 included King in heaven. And you are trusting on that holy name, oh God, that my Father, you will heal our people, that you heal our nation for the glory and honor of your name. We thank you for the Church of Christ, oh my Father. Thank you for the Presbyterian Church of East Africa, my Father. We thank you for the leadership of the General Assembly, my Father. We thank you for the leadership in our presbyteries, Lord. We thank you for the leadership even in our parishes, my God. Even as we remember PCA Kigiti Parish, oh God. We thank you for the Father that you have brought us as a parish, Lord. We lift our leverage before thee, my God. And we pray, my Lord, that you may fill him with a lot of wisdom, my Father, that even as he reads this parish, oh God, your spirit will guide him, oh Father. We thank you for the elders of this parish, my God. King in glory, we pray for wisdom, even as you continue to serve your people. Thank you for our deacons and our group leaders, oh King in glory. At this difficult time, my Father, we ask for your wisdom. We remember all our members, oh God. All of them, wherever they are, are king in glory. They are those that my father are lonely. They are those that my father are suffering because of job losses, king in glory. My God, you reminded us that you are God of second chance. You are God who is able to restore. And this morning we pray for restoration of those jobs that have been lost. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Father and our Redeemer. We thank you because, my God, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly that which we ask for, my Father. And so we know you are going to restore us, my God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, our members are at home, my Father, because the sanctuary has been locked out for some people, my God. And this morning we are calling upon your name, my God, that you may open the gates of churches in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that you are another God and you came through for us, even now we Trusting on you, God, that they shall not go for long, my God, because you are going to prefer, my Father. We want to commit the general assembly that is on coming before thee, God. We pray for a lot of wisdom, even for the moderator of the general assembly, my Father, and the acting secretary general, my Father, as they plan on every activity that is going to be done on this general assembly at a difficult circumstances, my God. We pray for wisdom. We pray, my Father, that everything shall go on well for the glory and honor of your name. Thank you, dear Lord, for gathering us here this morning, O oh Lord. My Father, you have gathered us because you have a message for us, O oh God. We thank you for your servant, O oh God. We pray for special anointing in the name of Jesus. As he starts to minister your word, King in glory, that, Lord, you may anoint him afresh, my Father, that you may give us receptive ears, O oh God, that we shall hear your word this morning, and we shall submit to your authority this day for the glory and honor of your name. And so, God, we commit this service before thee, God, Praying that, Lord, you are going to be with us to the very end. All for the honor and glory of your name. We give you glory. We give you thanks. For this is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we go straight for the reading. It will be done by Elder Mudoga. Praise God. Our reading this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to verse 14. Ezekiel 37 
1 to 14. Let us read together. The heart of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all round. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bone leaves? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus is the Lord God to these bones. Surely, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put snooze on you and bring fresh upon you, cover you with the skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the shoes and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, prophecy to breath, prophecy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus is the Lord God, come from the four wits, O breath, and breath on this rain, that they may live. So I prophesied, as he commanded, as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great, great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore, prophecy and say to them, Thus is the Lord God. Behold, O my people, I will open the, your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. 14 and the last one. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. That's the word of God. Thank you. Now to call our preacher, we will sing the service that seem to be read by the praise and worship team. We are singing the power of the cross.
Yes, indeed, our dear Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who became sin for us, uh, who took the blame and bore the wrath, and so we can stand uh, victoriously and declare that we are forgiven at the cross. And so, Lord, we ask you, to help us to celebrate in a worthy manner are the blessings that come with this forgiveness. And so, Lord, we ask you to speak to our hearts today. Draw us close to yourself. Help us to hearken to your lips. And Lord, may you go forth and transform us and make us what you like us to be. Wash us and make us what we are not. Teach us what we do not know. And Lord, the glory and honor shall come back to you. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, for those of you, uh, for those who are here, I ask that you sit down. I want to uh, greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, praise the Lord. Yeah, my name is Afaksa Chege. I love the Lord as my Savior. Uh, indeed, he has continued to renew my heart and give me the assurance of the hope that I have received through the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm so glad to uh, see the few that I'm seeing here and also see you virtually as we celebrate uh, Resurrection Sunday. Uh, we've had uh, a, a glorious week, uh, much as uh, what we had is not what we expected. Uh, but we want to thank God for uh, the Holy Week series that we've been having since Monday. And for those of you who've been able to follow, I trust that uh, you have been blessed. And those of you who have not followed, I continue to ask you to uh, go to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and there you'll find our devotions uh, daily from Monday all the way to yesterday, Holy Saturday. And so today is Resurrection Sunday, a day that means a lot uh, to the Christian fraternity. And I'd like us to now be attentive to the scriptures that the Lord has given us today from uh, Ezekiel uh, 37, uh, from verse 1 to 14 as we also uh, continue to 
meditate on John 11, 25 to 26, which was our call to worship, uh, we can make that our backdrop as we think about Ezekiel uh, 37. And uh, we know that Ezekiel was one of the prophets uh, of the mighty Lord, and we know that he was called uh, somewhere around the time that uh, the children of Israel were in Babylon. They were in exile in Babylon. And so Ezekiel, together with uh, his wife uh, and family, are part of the uh, Jews uh, that were held captive in Babylon. And uh, Babylon was held captive, uh, uh, Judah was held captive uh, somewhere around 597 BC. And so this is a few years after they had gone to Babylon, and we, they were like 10,000 uh, of the Jews who are now residing in Babylon after Jerusalem was invaded. And so this was a really difficult time uh, for the Jews. Uh, this was a time that uh, there were all signs of hopelessness. Uh, there were all signs of uh, loss of hope and loss of strength. And it was like uh, the future uh, had gone down the drain. And so we see the children of Israel are far away from their land. They are far away from the temple. They are far away from reading the law. The law used to uh, be read uh, within their families and within the environment that they were used to. They were far away from the teachings of the priests because the priests were also scattered. And so... Actually, many in exile got to a point where they thought that their God had actually been defeated. So every sign of hope, everything that had to do with their identity was nowhere to be seen. There was hopelessness. There was death in the atmosphere. There was a feeling of uh, rejection. There was a feeling of, you know, like it had come to an end. And so we see the Lord calling his prophet Ezekiel, uh, who is still in exile, and he begins to show him a vision about uh, the state of Israel. And we see that in uh, verse 1. And the Bible says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out, of, out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a, of, of a valley, and it was full of bones. And bones is basically a, a sign of life that was there and is not there now. Uh, bones uh, is a symbol of life that used to exist in the past, but isn't there. And then the Bible says, in verse 2, He held me back and forth and among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. So we are not just talking about bones, we are talking about bones that were dry. And we are not talking about few bones, but we are talking about many, many bones. And God is showing Ezekiel, that now that Judah is in exile, this is a, the extent of hopelessness that they feel they are in, being far away from the atmosphere that they're used to, the environment that they're used to, being far away from you know, reading the law, uh, praying and bringing their sacrifices in the temple. They are so detached from who they really were. And as I thought about this scripture, I thought about the state that we are in currently as a country and also as a world, uh, as a universe, uh, because of the sickness that has come upon us, uh, because there is just lots of hopelessness uh, all around us. Uh, there is a sense of defeat. You know, people feel defeated. Uh, people feel neglected. There is just too much death everywhere. Actually, now newspapers have had to add a few pages on the obituaries section because there are more people more people's death are to be reported. The, de the death announcements on our radios and, and TVs, uh, that section now is being prolonged. It's longer because there's just so much to be said. Uh, economy is down. There's just too much hopelessness in the atmosphere. So much like what was going down in Judah at a moment like this. And so we are living in times when death is almost being embraced as, you know, something normal, uh, while it really it shouldn't be. Uh, we are living in times when uh, we hear reports all the time about people who are sick or people who are looking for ICU beds. Uh, we are just hearing reports about how people are deteriorating as far as their health is concerned. The economy is going down. People have lost their jobs, and you can breath the air of hopelessness. 
in the atmosphere. But there is just something that's a lot more serious than just the kind of death that we are seeing physically. There is something more grievous, there is a death that is more grievous than the economic death that we are seeing. There is something a lot more serious than, than bad health. And this is a kind of death that we see the Bible handling so strongly and so clearly. And this is the death of the heart. And this must be the death that uh, makes us even mourn more as Christians. Uh, this is a kind of death that should make us be more fearful other than just the physical death that we are seeing around us. This is a kind of death that is more grievous, more severe. It has worse consequences. Because if we are dead in the heart, that means we are separated from God and that means we have to prepare for consequences that are more harsh. I think it's Apostle Paul who said, whether I'm alive or dead, I'm still with the Lord. So basically, Apostle Paul is saying, it doesn't matter if I am not present here with you physically, if I cease to be with you physically, I will be with the Lord in the spirit. And what he says in Philippians 1.21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And so Apostle Paul is saying, you know, the worst thing that, the best thing that can ever happen to anyone is to be in fellowship with God. But the worst thing that can ever happen to anyone is to fail to be in fellowship with God. Much as we are praying that the Lord will protect us from sickness and I'm praying that none of us will, will, you know, will, will get sick. My prayer is most of us will live longer. But my greater prayer for all of us is that whether we are alive or dead physically, that we are going to be alive in the spirit. Because if we die, while we are alive in the spirit, if we die physically, that means we are still not lost. We are still together with the Lord. And that's what Apostle says in, in Romans 8. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ, whether you are alive or dead. And this is what makes church unique. This is what makes this faith community unique. Because amongst the many kinds of challenges and problems that we would want to address, the primary reason why we gather is because we want to address the death of the heart. Much as we will address other issues along the way, we might address social issues, we might address financial issues, we might address health issues somewhere along the way, our main pursuit, our main objective as Christians, our main objective, we who bear the mark of Christ, is to deal with the death of the heart. Because we know that the root of the matter is at the heart. And when man was separated from God in Genesis 3, after they partook of the forbidden fruit, that was the worst thing that ever happened in the history of mankind. And so the most primary pursuit, the most primary goal, the, the goal that should make us rise up as Christians is to pray that the Lord will keep us alive in the spirit. And of course the death of the heart comes because of sin. And we see the reason why uh, the children of Israel were being uh, punished by God, the reason why they were in exile, is because they had committed the sin of idolatry, despite the many warnings that they had received from God and his messengers, we see a very merciful God who had given them many chances, cannot take it anymore. And because of the sins of apostasy, God releases suffering upon them. And so it's important for us to remember that suffering always goes along with sin. The reason why there is so much pain is because of sin that happened in Genesis 3 and that put in us a sinful nature that makes us vulnerable to all forms of pain and suffering. So every time we see sickness, let's remember where it all began. Let's not just address the symptoms, uh, the secondary things, the things that are superficial. There is a deep-rooted problem in every human being and it's because of our sinful nature. And so when we look at the screen and we hear the numbers being announced and we are told uh, uh, this number died today, let's remember how bad sin can get. You know, when we, 
watch a TV and we look at how the world is suffering. Uh, we see how uh, people are looking for uh, vaccines. Uh, they are having sleepless nights, thinking about how they are going to address uh, the new variants that are coming every new day. And when we see these new variants, as Christians, let's quickly remember how grievous the death of the heart can be. And that is what makes us unique as Christians. That we are here to address the issues of the heart. We are here to ask the Lord to fill us with his mercy. And bring narrow the separation between him and man. And close that gap that is there. And indeed he has. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ who died and faced the wrath of a holy God. And so the Bible tells us in verse 3, he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? And what a trying question this must have been. Ezekiel at the valley looking at dry bones and he's asked by God, can these bones live? And I imagine the question was so obvious. When you look at dry bones, the obvious answer is a big no. Dry bones cannot live. But there is something more about this question than the question itself. And what is more is the one who is asking this question. Because it matters who asks the question. And Ezekiel knows too well that the one who asks this question cannot be perceiving these dry bones as he perceives them as a human being. And that's why Ezekiel says, I said to him, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. So Ezekiel says, In the sight of man there is no hope. In the sight of man there is nothing like these bones coming back to life. If Ezekiel was being asked about uh, somebody who had just died a few minutes ago or somebody who is on ventilator, maybe at the ICU, that would have been an easier question to answer. Can this person live? Yes, there is hope. If a certain doctor would come or if a certain in injection would be done or if resuscitation would be done to somebody whose heart stopped beating a few minutes ago, then there is hope for life. There is hope. There is hope. But for somebody who has died and the flesh is rotten and has given away and the bones have been there on the floor and they are now dry. That's a difficult question to answer. But Ezekiel knows too well that God in his sovereignty has power to do anything with his bones. Do we have someone who is hopeless today? Do we have someone who feels like they have reached the end and uh, you know, they have lost their jobs, lost a loved one, uh, their business has stalled. I invite you today to submit to the sovereignty of God. I invite you today, and how I pray that the Lord will put faith in your heart, that you would bear the wisdom that was in Ezekiel when he said, Only you, Lord, know. Ezekiel knew too well, that what is impossible with man is possible with God. Ezekiel knew too well that nothing is difficult for God. Nothing is difficult for God because he made Sarah bear a child way when, while he was beyond the, the, the age, the biological age that is for childbearing. And so there is hope for those who are in the world. How I pray and I invite you today to submit uh, to the sovereignty of the Lord. And the Bible tells us here in verse 4, Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And this scripture draws us to our hope today that the thing that we ought to cling to as believers is nothing else but God's word. That the place where we can find peace unspeakable is in the word of God. That the place where we can get the assurance of hope 
the hope that we cannot get from any human being, the hope that we cannot get on earthly success is in the word of God. Now that we feel downtrodden and hopeless, now that we feel like we are, uh, we are oppressed and we feel uh, pressed down in so many ways because of this disease, uh, we feel desperate as we uh, chase for vaccines and as we pray that the Lord will protect us. Now that we feel down because we have lost our jobs and economy is down, we are reminded today that we can listen to the word of God. And that is the hope that there is in the church today. And that is the hope that there is in the Christians today. That we cannot look to anything else. That we cannot read anything else. That we cannot listen to anything else. Apart from the word of the Lord. Do we want revival in the church? It has to come from the word of the Lord. One Charles Spurgeon said. If we want revivals. We must revive our reverence for the word of God. If we want conversions. We must put more of God's word into our summons. It must be his word upon which we place our reliance. For the only power which will bless men lies in that. Our hope is only in the word of God. May we read it. May we meditate upon it. May we listen to the voice of God. May we obey the word of God. May we hearken. To this voice. May we hide under this word. May we go to this word for instruction. May we go to this word for direction. And indeed, uh, we shall be pursuing a path that brings pleasure and satisfaction in a fallen world. And the Bible says, So I prophesied, and I was as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. There was a rattling sound, a sense of hope. Not much had happened so far, but there was a rattling sound. Something good was happening. Some, something new was happening. It is important for us Christians to check out for that rattling sound. That small thing that you call small that the Lord has done. Has the Lord woken you up today? Uh, have you lost your job but you still have something to eat? That's a rattling sound. Have you lost your job but you have some kibarua somewhere? Kushikilia? That's a rattling sound. The Lord is still with you. And so if we want to enjoy the voice or the blessings of God, may we check out for that rattling sound. And the Bible tells us about how Ezekiel continued to prophesy. And the Bible says that the bones that were far apart from each other came together. And then the tendons came upon these bones. And then the flesh came upon uh, these bones. And then there was skin upon this flesh. And then there was this human being, but was still incomplete. This man or oh, these human beings still did not have breath. But then the Bible says that Ezekiel was told to continue prophesying and he commanded the air to come from the corners of the winds and the air came and filled these human beings and they began to come back to life. And the Bible says in verse 10, so I prophesied and as he commanded me and breath entered them, they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. A vast army. Bones that were dry. Lives of thousands of men that were long gone came back to life. A vast army. Isn't this the hope? The hope of the restoration of life. Isn't this what Christ blessed us with when he died? Isn't this what Christ achieved for us when he was buried? And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. And that is why Paul is clear in 1 Corinthians 15 when he says, it is a gospel. That Christ died and he was buried and on the third day he rose again from the dead. So Christ embraced the wrath of God on our behalf. Christ paid the debt of our sin, all of our sin, all of the sin of those who believe. And he died with all of it. 
This is what we call the precious exchange, the great exchange that he took all of our sin, whether known or unknown, whether public or secret. He took all of it, whether we committed it while we were old or young. He took all of it and he went with it to the grave. And then he graciously and with lots of mercy gave us, gifted us with his righteousness. Oh, can I hear hallelujah? <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it a blessing to receive the righteousness of Christ? We who are dead, but in his mercy and love, he gave us his righteousness. And that's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Verse 13 of this scripture says, of Ezekiel uh, 37. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O oh my people. You shall know that I am the Lord when I conquer the spirit of death. You see, power over death is a signature of God. No the power, no invention of discovery can bring a halt to death. God has a fingerprint that brings death down. And there's something really precious about the resurrection of Christ. It cannot be compared with the resurrection of Lazarus and others who came back to life in the Old Testament. Because those who came back to life before Christ, they came back to the corruptible body. So that means much as Lazarus rose up again from the dead, there was still another burial for Lazarus. I mean, I, I, I keep trying to imagine what it meant for Lazarus to die again. People must have thought this guy might probably rise again from the dead. Yeah, but he didn't. But when the Lord Jesus Christ died, he came back in the incorruptible body. This is a body that death cannot come close to. This is a kind of body that death cannot have his grip on. And this is what we enjoy for those of us who know the Lord. So I pray that the Lord will open up your heart today and put his signature in it. The signature of the power over death. And so on Resurrection Sunday, there is a reason to celebrate because the same way that Ezekiel prophesied is the same way that the Lord Jesus Christ lay on the cross and he died and rose up again so that we could be full of life and we could enjoy a restoration that cannot be measured or compared with any other kind of earthly restoration. A restoration that's better than a strong economy. A restoration that's better than a COVID-free season. A restoration that's better than financial success. A restoration that is eternal. May the Lord reign in your heart in the power of the resurrection. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we thank you that you have allowed us to celebrate Resurrection Sunday by hearing the gospel and by hearing the debt that the Lord Jesus Christ paid for us on the cross. And so Lord, would you help us to embrace with vigor and honor and zeal the blessings that we have, we who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And even as we are surrounded with all these reports that inflict fear in us, all these kinds of stories that instill horror in our hearts, may we, find it a, may we find a reason to be joyful because indeed death has been conquered by the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Lord, we thank you and this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for that powerful and encouraging message.
reminding us that indeed there is hope in Christ and there is that great exchange. We exchange our sickness with good health, we exchange our poverty with wealth. And now it's time for offering. Time for offering. We want to give Elder Morgi to lead us in that session as we sing the hymn. Papa, you have. When I see fever, time for offering. I want to remind you uh, that uh, we have a pay bill numbers for offering. In Jadaini, pay bill is two four seven two four seven. Account number is nine two zero seven two zero. And put Hatch then your district. Seven three seven one. You put hatch and then district and then dot G. Uh, I think uh, we have that, and I hope it's clear. So for those who are not, uh, who don't get the numbers, I may just uh, repeat very fast. Again, Javaini, 247-247. There is account number 920720-Hatch District. Thereby, 247-247. Account number 0640-269-500-926. Irigiti, we have got uh, three accounts. Pay bill four zero zero two two two, and then one seven six uh, seven three seven one district, and then T one seven six seven three seven one arch district O one seven six seven three seven one arch district. You may now uh, put your uh, overtory in any of the relevant pay bill and account numbers. Nitam Fuata Nje Alango Niki Furahia Aibo Yamu Salaba. Mwana kondo Nita mfuata Nje ya lango la mti Ame ingia Ame ingia Malipata katifu Kwa damu yake Uh, 
let's pray offering our heavenly father in the name of jesus christ we are humbled to have given us the opportunity to participate in the giving of our offerings and tithes we thank you for your provision we want to thank you because you have provided for us and want to pray Jehovah God that whatever your people gives the Jehovah God it will go into the spreading of the kingdom remember those who have given and Jehovah God continue providing unto them and for those who may have not have given for one reason or another please remember to give them and remind them the Jehovah God that uh, it's good to give and Jehovah God that you are going to enrich and give them even that our desire to give back to you we thank you we glorify you for this our prayer of faith in Jesus name amen thank you we have come to the end of our service and now we wish you a great week that is coming and now we call our mchugaji to give us the final benediction now let's uh, uh, receive the benediction together may the good lord bless you and keep you may he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you may he lift up his countenance on you and give you peace that goes beyond all human comprehension may he make you know well his power over death may he guide you and give you victory in all the dying areas of your life and ultimately may he fill your heart with his spirit and may the blessings of god the father the son and the holy spirit be with you now and forevermore amen you hi jehovah